Today's episode, we're going to discuss how to demonetize your YouTube channel in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This, this is fake. It's a prop. It's a prop. Don't hate me. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about real shit. Once again, we're pitting the Sony ZV-1 against another formidable opponent. I've compared this camera to the a6400, the a7C, the a7 III, and most recently, the a7S III. Today, this camera is going up against the iPhone 12 Pro. This is long overdue. Many people say the new smartphone cameras and their computational photography are the death of point-and-shoot cameras like this. Well, we're going to take these two cameras out into the backyard proving grounds, pit them up against each other, and see how they do. One of the reasons I started this channel was because I was frustrated watching review after review of the same thing over and over. People just read the specs off the box or the website and then run around and tell you how great the gear is so that company will send them more free gear or some other sponsorship will happen. That's not what I'm doing here. I just tell it like it is. I don't have any loyalty to anyone but you as a viewer and me as the person who bought this stuff. If you find yourself as equally frustrated as I was, consider hitting that subscribe button down below and we can check out different gear together. Enough talk. Let's take these two cameras outside in the backyard proving ground and see what they do against each other. Well, this is long overdue. You guys have kind of asked for it in the past. These two cameras, can you tell the difference? Can you tell which one is the iPhone 12 Pro and which one is the ZV-1? Is it possible? Just by looking at this, I'll give you a second. How are they working for you? What do you think? Well, the phone on your right is the iPhone 12 Pro, and the phone on your left is our trusty little ZV-1, my favorite little camera. It's another windy day. As always, I pick the best time of day to do this, right at high noon, where the light is the harshest and worst. But hey, if the camera can perform well in this environment, it should perform well in any environment. Let's go ahead and get to one at a time testing these cameras and seeing how they do. Okay, let me just break in here real quick. I know that was a pretty obvious difference of which two cameras were which, but I accidentally left the ZV-1 in S-Log2, which is my preferred picture profile when I'm shooting. The rest of the video, I'll have it in its uh, intelligent auto mode with the picture profile off, so it'll be a closer, a closer match. But you're still going to get plenty of side-by-side -side footage of both cameras in their uh, respective auto modes, so keep watching. The other thing I wanted to tell you was my footage here in the iPhone, I'm not doing like a lot of these other big channels you see that are trying to convince you that this is, you know, equal to an A7S III or Ari Alexa or any of the crazy comparisons that are done. I think those are fun videos to watch, but it's kind of ridiculous when they have a team of professional editors and colorists that will take the footage from the iPhone and make it look like it came out of a cinema camera. Well, sure, if you've got a team of professionals with 20 plus years experience each, you too can make this footage look like that. But if you're a regular person like me and you, that's just not a realistic comparison. So the footage you're gonna see today between these two cameras is gonna kind of be what you see is what you get, unless I indicate otherwise somewhere in the video. Okay, back to the backyard. All right, first up, we're gonna do the iPhone. Now, I know Filmic Pro just released a an update for the iPhone where you can uh, film in like 10-bit log. I'm not using that for this because for one, it's $13 to add that. And second, I just think most people that are going to compare these two cameras probably aren't worried about using log footage. So we're going to do this comparison today. I'll show you what you can do with the log footage on the ZV-1, but for the most part, we're going to go ahead and stick with just the, the automatic mode. So this is using the iPhone's native camera app and this is the image quality out of the iPhone 12 Pro. I think it's it's pretty good. Now, a lot of people say that the you know point and shoot cameras and cameras in general are dead because of these smartphones. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that 100%. Point and shoot cameras might be done. I mean, that's that's the thing. It depends on what your use is. Most people are going to use the camera they have with them. Holy smokes, it's windy. Well, hopefully you can hear me. If not, I'll be redoing this. Oh boy. You know can't have anything nice. I make everything a mess. So ZV-1, intelligent auto mode, active steady shot is on here. And this is the image quality compared to the iPhone 12. Let's go ahead and put a side by side up and compare. What do you think? 
I mean, I, I haven't even looked at this yet, so I'm not gonna tell you in here, but I can tell you some of the footage I've done with my iPhone. It looks pretty darn good. The skin still doesn't look exactly right, but I mean, it's, it's come pretty far. Do you need to buy a camera dedicated like this, like the ZV-1, or can you survive with just an iPhone? I really can't answer that for you. That's why I'm making this video. You can take a look at the different types of footage I have here and then make a decision for yourself what you think is going to work best for you. So another thing that was mentioned on this new iPhone is that it shoots in 10-bit colors. So let's see what we can do as far as pushing and pulling these colors. Can we do a more extreme grade on it? Like, can I make it look this weird look like this? I mean, does this or does this like totally fall apart like this? Is this, maybe this is a new LUT. New LUT pack's coming soon, just like this. And you know you want them. This is amazing. Do you think the ZV-1 could do this? Well, we're gonna try. In this clip here, we're using, like I said, the intelligent auto mode. So it's kind of a baked in color profile. I don't know that you necessarily can do a lot of color grading with it, but this is 8-bit footage versus the iPhone, which now has 10-bit footage. So let's just go ahead and slap my super soon to be sold to you LUT right on it and here we go this is the extreme color grade LUT I don't know what we're going to call this LUT maybe I'll I'll put a little explanation of what we're going to call this right here and would you buy this LUT let me know down below so one advantage that the iPhone has over the ZV-1 is it's capable of shooting in 4k 60 frames a second just like we're doing right now Okay, time for our stabilization test. So now we're gonna go ahead and walk. This is the iPhone 12 Pro with its stabilization, which is pretty good in my, in my experience. It's pretty good. Um, I'm just walking without any care in the world. My usual walk here, January in Florida, wearing shorts and flip-flops. All right, let's walk back, our usual path back here. And now we're gonna try and smooth out our steps like we always do. One of the negatives about the iPhone is you can't really see yourself. Uh, in order to use the best quality camera on here, I've got to use the, the forward facing camera and I can't see if I'm in frame right, if my head's cut off. I don't know. So if this video looks like me cut off a lot, I'm sorry about that. But how's this stabilization? All right, time for our stabilization test. You've seen it before here with the active steady shot on, but let's go ahead and do it again. Here is walking with the ZV-1 without a care in the world. No attempt to smooth things out at all. Doing our usual walk, our path that we take every time. I was surprised when I compared this to the A7S III that it actually uh, did pretty good with stabilization. I don't know if it's because it's a smaller sensor or, or what, but it did okay. Now I'm trying to, to walk back and this time I'm trying to, to step a little bit better or a little more careful and try and take some care in my steps to keep the camera steady. But I've noticed sometimes this is worse. Sometimes it's a little bit better when I just relax and don't worry about it. But this is what you get. Also, it's probably important to mention that you can use Catalyst Browse. Go ahead and check out my last video I did between the ZV-1 and the A7S III. I went pretty extensively into Catalyst Browse and how it works. You can skip ahead into that video and, and just look at that part and see how Catalyst Browse stabilizes your footage. I don't want to waste your time making you go through and watch all of that here in this. Just wanted to kind of do a quick comparison of these cameras and sort of their basic auto mode and let you decide what you think's best. All right, for the next test here with the iPhone, let's talk about the audio. Here is the audio coming directly from the iPhone, right? And this is what you get. Now it's a pretty windy day. This is not the ideal conditions, but that's kind of good. This is gonna test the iPhone in more realistic conditions, not in a perfect studio environment. Okay, now back to my Zoom H1, which I'm just running through, you know, a lav mic right into the Zoom H1. Normally, I, I plug into one of my cameras and do it with a microphone, and this time I just felt like trying the H1 outside. Why not, right? Got to mix things up a little bit. One of the areas that the ZV-1's kind of strong is, in my opinion, is its built-in microphone. Sure, it's not the best. There is, it does sound a little bit more tinny sometimes, but let's switch to it now. 
So this is the audio from the ZV-1 with its onboard mics. It has this little wind muff that comes with it, which I think is kind of nice. It helps to mitigate some of this wind. Today it may actually sound better than my little uh, external recorder because I don't have the proper wind mitigation on this. I should probably get that, shouldn't I? Anyways, back to the, see now, hear this with the wind? This is with a bit of wind and my external recording right here. Some people hate the audio from the ZV-1. I don't think it's bad. I think it's pretty good considering you can just have the whole little package in your pocket, kind of like with the iPhone. But which one do you think sounds better? Okay, so here, let's see how the iPhone handles um, changes in exposure. I mean, the sun just did go behind the clouds, but let me go ahead and move here into a more shaded area. And how does the exposure adjust on this? Is it something that's obvious? Is it smooth? Does the white balance change well? Is this, is this something we can deal with? Now let's step out here into a sunny area and get the sun right in our face. And how does the exposure change here? Did that do well? And the sun's moving behind a cloud again. This is pretty good, good timing for me. Thank you, weather. All right, of course now the exposure's not changing very much, but we'll see what we can do. We'll see how we can make it happen, do an exposure change here with the ZV-1. We, we can go up in here into a shady area like so. I'm just hoping that the sun comes out. There's big clouds up there. Actually, little sprinkles of rain happening, so it's kind of dark here, right? Let's, let's back up and get over here into brighter areas and see how is the exposure adjusting. Is it natural looking? Is, it, is this exposure change abrupt? Is it prioritizing my face? Am I backlit real bad? Give it a second to work. This is how the ZV-1, and that's one of the areas, I think the ZV-1 does a nice job with its uh, auto exposure. So honestly, between this camera and the, and the A6400, I think, depending on what you use it for, but if someone was asking me, hey, I just want something simple, I wanna go out vlogging, you know, what should I get? I would probably recommend this over the A6400. That's really not this video. I made a long video about it, but it would all, again, depend on your use for the camera, but in my opinion, I think for just a vlogging walk around camera, this is better than just about anything that Sony offers. But that's, again, my opinion. Now, if you're gonna be in a studio or in low light environments, you know, things start changing. You wanna change lenses, how you wanna do stuff. That's why you can't really tell somebody what's best for them. You've gotta hear all the circumstances about how they wanna use the camera and what their future plans are with it to determine what's the best fit for them. As far as what's best, I mean, that's, you really can't tell people that. How do you know? Everybody's different. So now, for a low light test. These phones traditionally are not the best in low light, especially smaller censored phones like this. I would normally say that the one inch sensor on the ZV-1 will blow this away, but they've done some magic with these new smartphones and they've got these night modes on them. So let's see how this does. Right now I'm just standing here and in like a porch light with a porch light lighting me up, but let's go over here into the shade and see what we see. Okay, so now out here in the dark, this is the same spot that I did the test last time with the ZV-1 and the A7S III. It's a little more light out than it was then. Now, I wouldn't say this is full on middle of the night dark, but this is definitely dark enough that if you were driving, you would have to have your headlights on to be able to see. So I'll give you an idea. It's currently 6.15 in the evening and it's January. It gets dark pretty early. I mean, this is dark. I would not be driving without headlights on. That's, that's the way I would describe it to you. So I haven't really done a true low light test with the iPhone before, so I'm gonna see this when I go into edit. I know I've heard good things about the low light performance of this new iPhone 12 Pro. We'll see here as we walk back toward the porch light if it improves a little bit. Let's try out the ZV-1 now. Standing in the same spot I was just standing with the iPhone to start with and here by the porch light, this is what we've got with the ZV-1. It's within two minutes or less of when I just did the iPhone footage. So let's take the ZV-1 over into the darkness that we were in a minute ago and, and see how it looks. The screen looks a lot brighter, but then again, on the iPhone, I couldn't see the screen. Now, if you would have asked me without even looking at any of this footage, I would tell you 100% that I think the ZV-1 is gonna win. But I've heard so many good things about the iPhone and its, its low light capability. So here we are back in the darkness, same spot. I was just standing with the iPhone and this is what we're getting with the ZV-1. Uh, looking at the screen, which I don't have that advantage on the iPhone, the ability to look at the screen, but I look very backlit. The sky looks really bright, and that is not a representation of what this sky looks like. It is much darker than that. Let me turn a little bit here. I didn't do this with the iPhone. Maybe I should have, but just to show you, it's 
it's certainly not like there's sun over there. Actually, the sun is setting that way. So there it is. And then we kind of get a little bit of the porch light hitting us here out in the yard. Well, that's going to conclude the low light test here. I was surprised when I did the, the ZV-1 versus the A7S III that the low, low light performance of the ZV-1 wasn't bad. Okay, let's take all this stuff back inside. I'm going to go look at all the footage, and then I'll talk to you again once I'm sitting at my desk and tell you what I think of everything. This, I've had a chance to look through the footage, and as always, I'm really impressed with the ZV-1. But more importantly, in this video, I've got to say, this is the first iPhone that I've ever owned, and I've, I've had them all the way back to the original, that I feel like can compete with cameras like this. It, it, you know, the skin still looks a little bit weird, in my opinion. It, it isn't, I'm not a big fan of all the colors, but overall, I say this looked really good. This is the best smartphone video I've ever seen. And do I think it could replace this? I think in a lot of circumstances, yeah. Let's be honest. The, the camera you're going to use is the camera you have with you. I have this with me literally everywhere I go. Pretty much anytime I leave the house, this is with me. This probably about 60% of the time is with me. This 100%. Matter of fact, this is probably with me as I move around my house. When I go out in the backyard to let the dogs out, this is always with me. So this is a very viable option in my opinion. Now, in the end, I think you probably will get a more cinematic look if that's what you're going for out of the ZV-1 than the iPhone. But let's not discount this computational photography and videography coming out of these smartphones is amazing. So do I think the point and shoot camera has been replaced with the smartphone? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I'd say, yeah, for 99.9% for .9 of the people. Well, there's there's a group of people that are creators on YouTube that the audio matters to them. You know, ultimate image quality and ease of use is going gonna, is gonna to matter to them. And some people just don't like having their phone tied up when they're making videos all the time. I'm kind of one of those people. Just to illustrate how smartphones are taking the place of point-and-shoot cameras, a lot of features that we find in smartphones are now being integrated into the latest releases of point-and-shoot cameras. For example, if you take your camera now and you hold it in this orientation, the video comes out perfectly sized to be used for Instagram, TikTok, things like that. They've adopted those sort of features in these cameras. So these cameras are now including features that are optimizing them to compete against smartphones where it seemed in the early days of smartphone cameras they were trying to compete with this the tables have definitely turned so when it comes to your workflow which one do you think is easier for me personally i still prefer having an sd card and popping it in my computer back here and and taking it off of there it was kind of a pain getting the footage off of this and I, i'm all apple everything but you know i guess i airdropped it there maybe there's an easier way to do it but i airdropped the footage to my imac and or to my macbook pro it is frustrating sometimes when i want to quickly post something that i've got to then wirelessly send it from this device to this device so i can post it so i don't really do that a lot with these cameras or even my a7 III or s a7s3 well these two cameras were pretty evenly matched in my opinion the zv1 continues to impress me and i just feel like it has a slight edge in image quality but again that's just my preference the iphone definitely wins out for convenience the fact that you're always going to have it with you and if you like to post your videos to instagram tiktok facebook things like that if social media is your game, iPhone is probably a much better choice, or any smartphone for that matter. I just happen to have an iPhone. What is your opinion? Do you think the point and shoot is dead? Do you think smartphones are the future of all cameras? Do you think all cameras will eventually go away? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.